you guys all received a phone call from Desmond stating that um, Desmond's going to commit murder here. And that was almost all the information that was given. But while it was very clearly Desmond and it was one of Desmond's known uh, burner numbers. Or at least known to you guys. Let me phrase it like that. It's one of your guys' numbers that you know of. It doesn't seem like Desmond. It seems completely out of character. However, there was a certain level of conviction in his voice that you have no reason to doubt what he said. Or he called it was the text yes it was a it was a phone call which also means he called each one of you individually and said it Alice doesn't have a phone okay well Alice doesn't have a phone <laughs> same <laughs> you guys have burner phones I don't I have know. an actual phone oh, he has a normal okay. he has a normal <laughs> High roller there. Normal, unsecured. I gave mine to Richie so that we don't have to call his actual phone. I don't have one right now. You don't think Adrian would have replaced your phone? Because Adrian, I doubt, would have put it up, put up with that. Why would he care? They didn't want to use phones anyways. Right. I suppose Alice could have been in the room when Adrian <laughs> no, got a phone call. I'll, I'll send them a postcard. <laughs> This whole phone. No, we have burner phones. I have. What are you? You have a hallucination, right? Just make it up. Come on. Uh, <laughs> I believe that's uh, Andre. Damn. <laughs> okay. You all got the message. Just full okay. stop. <laughs> um. Whether it was by carrier pigeon or not. Well, I presume I'm feeling um, good enough to get out of bed. I mean, you know, bones still crack a little bit, but that's that's normal. It's just arthritis. You're capable of moving. Um, might not want to sign up for Fight Club anytime soon, but... Eh, I would. Non-strenuous activity is fine. It's literally what the doctor recommends. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. I, I didn't realize he was so dramatic now. You know, if you're going to murder someone, just go do it. What do I need to know? He's not that dramatic. Does anyone know where he went? Uh, wasn't he going to the library? He was doing research on something, right? Are you Library, communicating through cards, simple. or...? Uh, at this point, it's been a while. I assume it's telepathy now. <laughs> at, uh, three... Let me see. I can have it with multiple people as, like, a switch hub or network or whatever. So is everybody just thinking their thoughts at each other, essentially? Well, Alice is thinking her thoughts. They can speak out loud if they choose. I'm speaking out loud. Same. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you got a library in the entirety of Washington, D.C. That's helpful. You want to go to the Library of Congress? It's down the road. Well, you got to go down a lot of roads, but... Library of Congress actually is not a bad place to do research for this type of stuff, honestly. No, but I don't think he would go there. No, it's a bit high profile. Yeah. <laughs> do we know anything about this individual that he said he was going to murder? Give a name. 
did not give an A. However, actually, here's a good question, and I, I have a feeling I'm gonna get the answer that I, I'm going to fear here. Does anybody here have computer? You fear correctly. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know how to tell you this, boss man, but I must have not taken it. I think Blackwell has computers. I can get computer Rick, with you amalgam. Do you have computer? No. Like the skill? Yeah, do you have computer as a skill? Rick. Oh, I do not. I'm sorry. I didn't know you were talking to me. <laughs> well, why don't we just try calling him back? Maybe he's just uh, in doing, having a moment. I have crafts and investigation, and that's all the mental skills I have. So you call him back? I'm going to try calling him back. The phone's answered. You hear what sounds like uh, a bull in a china shop is a good way, good word here. You hear things breaking, you hear plight shattering, you hear somebody's voice that you don't recognize sh uh, shouting their address stating that uh, there is a psychotic individual that has broken into their home and is attempting to murder them. Um, I called them with their phone. That's pretty ballsy. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. They called your line. You answered your line and they can hear this guy shouting his information. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. It's all background noise, essentially, is what they're hearing. So we I'm have. I'm just going to leave address. it on speakerphone. It's kind of just stare openly at the room, just like. We have an address now. I thought you people want it to be low profile. I do I... want to be low profile. He did too, huh? Uh, as a brief well, moment. City of hypocrites. Until it was time to strike, that's what I said. Uh, also, for Rick and Adrian. As Alice says that, <laughs> there's another voice that comes through uh, whatever she did. What's the point? Let everything die. It's okay. It doesn't matter. Everything returns to what it started from. Nothing. Let's return everything back to nothing. Alice, you're not All aware right, of girl, this. Stop, stop okay. LARPing or whatever. Tone, tone the nihilism down. And let's stay on track, huh? And it's not Alice's voice that comes through. But it's still... <laughs> well, he associates voices in his head right now with Alice, so... That's perfectly fair. <laughs> Where are you getting nihilism from? I'm just... I've heard you youngins all the time, Oh, the world sucks and we all want to die. Quiet, you. Let's get <laughs> back on track. You speaking in my head again. Why don't you go back to writing? You want to write your manifesto instead of spitting it into my cranium. I thought this would be faster and easier. Rick just thinks the voice is coming from the phone and is like, Desmond, who is that? No response. It's definitely not on. As far as you could tell, um, the phone's not at Desmond's ear. As far as you can tell, at least it doesn't okay, make sense okay, in this situation. This is helpful. Rick is just going to yell, hey, hey, suits. They're not here. They haven't been here for like five days. Oh, 
Well, we need to leave. All right. We know where he is. Yeah, I'm going to hang up the phone and pull up the map right now. Where Where is he? Is he in walking distance? Like, <laughs> No, not within walking distance. Okay. You're in... What a... More or less, you're on the um, river. This is definitely more of an industrial style area rather than a residential uh the residential area that the address takes you to is across the river now i say this uh like that it's in the um arlington area so you have to Across the river and get to the Arlington uh, section of DC. Back to the Pentagon area. Mm -hmm. Right, well, I don't got a car, so I guess that person's probably dead. I don't have a car either. Is there one nearby? Does anyone know how to drive? I mean, my license is probably lapsed, but yeah. You can't drive? No, I legally. Do. No, no, not you. The the girl over there. Why, you can't, you can't drive? I never had the opportunity to try, no. Well, your parents didn't take you out of the parking lot like everyone else? No, they, they died when I was young. Thanks. Oh, uh... Well, I, mean, I guess we could take, like, a bus or something. He's gonna start walking out of the room. Oh, I don't like that suggestion. As long as we find one that's crowded enough. Actually, no. Buses wouldn't drop off in a residential district. Uh, won't work. Um, I, I guess we could call, like, a, a, a taxi. Do those still exist, I think. I live in a residential neighborhood and the bus stop is literally right outside my door. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, I live in the middle of nowhere in the woods where we don't have public transport, so I don't know. But getting back in character for a second. Um, and if you're wanting a... Um, it's not super close to the Pentagon. It's not like in Pentagon City. Uh, don't worry, it's not there. Um, it's more in the Barcroft, Westmont, um, Alcova Heights area. Okay, well, how are we getting there? You guys want to take a cab? You want to take a bus? I mean, oh, an Uber. I think either way, it'll be a bit suspicious if we take a cab directly to a murder scene, but you know. Whatever. <laughs> this is an industrial area. Uh, it's midday. There are plenty of people that have parked their cars to go to work. So, I mean, there are definitely cars available should you decide to take the more illegal route here. Uh, sorry, I'm an upstanding citizen that does not know how to hotwire a car. Sorry. I am uh, exiting the building and uh, kind of standing out in the curb, just kind of looking around like, uh -huh. yeah. Let's take the bus. Might see someone familiar there. Okay. I'm sure we'll arrive just in the nick of time, not to it. To get him out, sure, but oh, that person is dead. At least well, I mean, to... it certainly didn't really sound like he was doing that good of a job. It sounded like he was just breaking property. Dramatic. Either way, the police are on their way, too. We need to make sure Desmond's okay, either way. 
Well, apparently you can hit him with a collar and he's fine, so I think we'll be okay. We do have to ask this question. I know for Alice, I already know that Alice's answer, so don't, don't answer. Are Adrian and Rick saying this out loud? Yes. Yeah, I don't, I don't like talking in my head. It's weird. It's not used to it. Okay. I'm, yes, I'm sure the doctor that we passed coming out of the building is now very concerned. Oh, no. No. It, it's not a doctor. Um... Do I want to do this? Yeah. Yeah. I think I should <laughs> do this. So, one of the things you do notice, uh, no special role needed, is as you kind of walk out of this warehouse, look in space, it is for sale. You guys would have known that. That's not really new information. Perception. Wits. It's four. Composure is three. Wits is four. Composure is three. What random passerby has that high of a wit's composure? I mean, he succeeded on the conspiracy gets to kill us roll. This ain't a random <laughs> passerby, buddy. Excellent. <laughs> you guys weren't... Let's just say, uh... This place has been pretty much empty for the last week. So there hasn't been any need for any sort of incognitoness, so to speak. Let's just phrase it like that. There's been no reason to be guarded, so that's why it didn't necessarily concern you. Until Adrian, specifically, you notice a woman sitting on a motorcycle across the street. Who you become very keenly aware as heard during your conversation. Or at least the parts of it that were outside. Did we say outside? I can't even... Um... Uh, dramatic, dramatic. It sounds like he's just breaking a lot of stuff, not killing people. <laughs> okay. She removes uh, her helmet. She appears to be in her 20s. Brown, brownish gold skin uh, looks vaguely Egyptian in her appearance. In a minute, I've seen this one before. <laughs> uh, she speaks very slowly. Um, sounds like you guys need to get to a place very, very quickly. Ah, uh, it's nothing. Don't worry about it. Just an old friend of mine being stupid again. He's probably drunk off his ass. Regardless, um, this warehouse yours? Or... Uh, prospective buyers. Uh... Oh, same here. Uh, you wouldn't happen to know who I can speak to. Maybe we can work out a little bit of a trade. Uh, you back the hell out of here and let me have it. And I, well, one, I don't talk about what I heard you say. Two. Oh, it's, it's a dump anyways. There's blood on the floor. <laughs> we just need a place to store stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you'll be fine. AC's been busted. Well. I mean, at least looks busted. We just went in, we're taking a look at it. I really wish you wouldn't interrupt me while I'm speaking, she says. And gives Adrian, stares Adrian down. Uh, speaking of that, actually... We're going to do... 
so she's got two presence and four in intimidation. Roll me. This will be opposed by your composure. What's your composure? Two. Dad, resolve doesn't ever get a chance to be used. This is so sad. No, if you want. That makes sense, actually. Uh, roll me resolve plus composure. We'll make this opposed. Sorry. We'll make this opposed. And you gotta believe in the heart of the dice. That's not a very good heart. You're the defender in this situation, though, so ties go to the defender. Hooray! So, her stare down, I mean, I'm not going to say it's completely ineffective, but it doesn't make you back down any. It doesn't cow you. But, definitely in your current condition, uh, she looks physically fit enough she could probably take you. Look, ma'am, yeah, I don't know what you, you know, whatever you want to be called. I don't care. I'm leaving. You can have your shitty warehouse. We have business to take care of. I probably have to go fish our old buddy out of some emergency department across the state. And... I think that's the end of the story. You cannot talk about anything, and I can also not call the police and threaten that, uh, tell them, tell them that you're threatening to kill me. You know, we, we can make this go both ways. I never threatened to kill you. <laughs> they don't need to know that. She Three against one right now. Lad Zero will back me up, probably. He's gonna look at him. She looks at the two of you. Yeah, you can have the warehouse, but, like, it's not really safe. It's not structurally sound. Watch out. I have more about lying to the police, but, you know, whatever. I don't plan on living in there. Is that what you guys were planning on doing, is living in there? You should really have higher standards than that. And as for names... You can call me Ishta. Just because my actual name would probably make you choke on your tongue. Cool. I don't imagine we'll ever be speaking again, because I'm not coming back here. So, uh, without further ado, uh, we oh. should probably get moving. And he's going to start walking away. All right. Yeah. Fine. Get out of here. Not like I was going to offer you a ride or anything. Because yeah, three people can't fit on the back of a motorcycle anyways, woman. She shakes her head, and a couple of people get out of a... What appears to be almost a hearse. Uh, four individuals get out of it and follow her into the building. I'm walking away. Okay. <laughs> <I don't... laughs> bus? Yeah. Uh, I mean, if the, if there's a bus stop nearby, I'm going for that. If not, I guess I'm calling a cab or an Uber or something. Same, but first I'm going to let the air out of their tires. Oh, after they go in? Yes. <laughs> we don't need to make enemies. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I don't want them following us. All right, you let the air out of their tires. Laying low. This is gonna go great. <laughs> Adrian is just gonna keep walking and pretend he's not seeing stupid things happening behind him. So Desmond, uh, give me an attack roll minus four. Minus four? Gotcha. Yep. Uh, Strength oh, plus no. brawl. Or weapon. No, it's brawl. Oh, it's a chance that. Wow. Wow. 
Let's do it. Let's go. Living on the edge of hope. Oh, it's a dramatic failure. Woo! It's a one. Yeah, but it's an attack roll, so by roll it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but I mean, you can do whatever you want. Your perception fades in and out here. One minute you're there, the next minute you're not. For lack of a better way to phrase it. You swing at this person, they move. Even when you're consciously there, you can't even recognize this person. Your vision when you are there is nothing but swirling black tentacles, almost, swimming through your vision. The incessant whispering is to the point where it's absolutely deafening. It's no longer almost at the back of your head like it was in the library. It is a droning chorus, almost. Hmm. It does Burp. stop. Huh. But it only stops for brief moments and then it slowly gradually builds back up again and it seems like when it reaches its crescendo that's when you're no longer there it's almost as if you were going unconscious repeatedly uh, you were getting ready to ask something uh, I had an idea, but it, it wouldn't work in this instance. I was just going to say, like, if I could, within the brief moments, like, consolidate all the time I have to, like, make a meditation check and see <laughs> if I could try and pinpoint and focus on the voice. No, oh, go, I see. go right ahead. That's perfectly okay. fine. I think meditation is, uh, intelligence composure. You think I, would I know don't this. recall. We had a character in Hunter that used it constantly. I think it's just resolve conversion, right? Or I think no, memory is intelligence composure. Probably is resolve composure for meditation. Two successes. So when you say focus on the voice, which voice are you trying to focus on? The cacophony? Wit's composure. It's wit's composure? Yeah. Oh, it's wit's composure? Mm -hmm. Uh, then I'll roll that again because it's a different dice pool. Yeah. No successes. Which voice were you trying to focus on either way? Not the cacophony because I really... I don't think he, it would have been any use to try and make anything out of that. Probably something where I could get some like tangible words from, or at least an idea of like the inflection and tone, or just a unique identifier of like the voice, like how they're speaking their dialect. Um, well, the person you're attacking is male and is very clearly uh, in an utter panic. It isn't until a second voice comes in that you're able to pick up anything. It's a very low and gruff voice. You've heard it before. Desmond, or... Uh. Is, that's what you're going by now, right, Desmond? Or... L let's just be candid here. Delta 23. Or is that even you, Delta? The next moment that you phase in, 
you see an individual that is roughly eight foot tall, seemingly tough, leathery skin, gray in color. Is this uh, Mr. Boogeyman here? Richard Krieger or? Codename Grundy. Yes. There is a brief moment in your head where you're like, of course this would happen while I'm not in full control. Well, and that... I could use I could use stubborn resolve here and try to break free. <laughs> try so that I can focus on my conviction. If you want to go right ahead. Awesome. And that thought isn't entirely yours either. The one that I just narrated. Okay. That's interesting. But go ahead and give me the your stubborn resolve, was it? Uh yeah, it's the universal adaption for deviance. So I'm gonna try and break free of this control. So that way I can pursue him. Or at least focus on him. I think it's Resolve composure, and then I add my conviction dots. Five successes. Exceptional. Is it exceptional? Does that do anything special? Uh, I think. It doesn't say anything for the adaptation itself. Okay. But I'd imagine probably some normal stuff with like an exceptional success, like a beat or gaining all willpower back or a willpower point back, or maybe just not being under the effect of it for the rest of the scene. I guess I leave it up to you. All right. I'll say go ahead and get a point of willpower back if you needed it. Ooh. Sure. I'm back to full. I'll probably need it. <laughs> the voice is... I don't... The voices aren't gone. They are pushed back into the back of your head, so to speak. Your vision clears enough for you to actually take in the scene before you. Whoever was making that frantic phone call is gone. The only person that stands in front of you is the slouched figure of codename Grundy. I say slouched because he's eight foot tall in a house that's not designed for somebody that is eight foot tall. Okay. So he is somewhat slouched, crouched, however you want to phrase it. I was surprised that I didn't see your see you there with your friends last time. Maybe I just missed you. So how are we gonna do this? I'm gonna eye him up and down first. What, aside from like his general apparel, does he look like he's armed or, I mean, I know he's capable just by himself, but. But also just looking around the surroundings as well, it's like, what could I use here to my advantage? There's... It seems like you're in a kitchen area. So there's um, plenty of broken implements that could be used here. Uh, improvised weaponry. Yeah, lots of improvised weaponry. There's uh, sharp kitchen knives and the like. All of that is usable here. And as for his armaments, you know this guy fairly well. Uh, he is wearing his wrist brace, which you're aware has a uh, 50 cal BMG loaded inside of it. Uh, the barrel isn't extended from the brace, so he, ha he isn't 
planning on firing it at this moment, but you know that can pop out within a second, and he can put a shot off. Okay. You do know it has very limited ammunition, though. Probably only four or five. It, it, it is literally just this massive hunk of metal around his forearm. Hmm. Okay. But other than Most that, he is just the hulking brute that he's always been. Just so the rest of the crew knows, you are about five minutes out at this point. Sitting on the bus, twiddling thumbs. Rick would have... So Rick was planning on just keeping an eye out and looking for either of the two people that were on the bus when he blacked out. But instead he's going to you be using the flashback merit... What does the flashback merit do for the audience here? Uh, it means that Rick is going to start, like, flashing back to something that happened during his, the haze of the last couple years of his divergence. And I get the shaking condition, and you would give me some kind of information about what happened that may be useful and it doesn't have to be obviously useful or useful at the moment. All right. So you gain the shaking condition. Let me open up the conspiracy page here. One moment. My remnants here. So, one thing, so you, I'm not gonna, this, I feel like this still matches up because it would still be pretty much a blur to you. Uh, this isn't necessarily, this is towards the end of your confinement during the escape attempt. Or, I shouldn't say attempt because you're free now. You weren't the only individuals that escaped. There were... You remember specifically. There were others that work with as a strong term. Paired with um, their divergence was more rough than yours. It seems like if you you tr you remember trying to speak with them and getting nothing but animalistic growls from people that look. Human. You remember they they booked it when you guys booked it. They didn't follow you, but it's improbable that there were a number, four or five at the very least. It's improbable to think that all of them died. Which for lack of a better phrasing, makes you think that there are people that are essentially animals running about the city, causing who knows what havoc. Which might get traced back to you, or, well, your cohort.
Okay, so I'm remem remembering this with like this thousand yard stare at the moment. Anybody gonna respond to his thousand yard stare? Uh, I feel like anything I reply with is just gonna make it worse, and he's just kind of he's just sitting on the bus, just like, okay, yeah. Also, uh, Adrian. You notice something that's not comforting to you either. Do I? You're sitting next to the window of the bus. You know, watching the houses go by as you draw closer. With no sense of decorum or anything. Your, um... Companion, let's just phrase it lands on your, on the window right next to you and starts tapping its tail on the window. Uh, well, uh... <laughs> Do we? Uh, there is considerable amount of honking on the road now. As this thing's like literally riding shotgun on the outside of the window. Well, I mean, it, it must want something. Does the window open? Yeah. I'm opening it, the window. It's that window <laughs> type open. Do not let a Cazador onto a public bus. It, oh, that breaks you. <laughs> it begins to start making clicking noises as if it's trying to communicate. Do I... Does it actually communicate? Because it can, because it's a manticore. <laughs> oh, God. I I'm going to have to do this. Uh, here. <laughs> I'm going to kill my throat here in about three seconds, so... <laughs> you, don't, you don't need to do a specific bug voice. <laughs> Are you sure about that? I like that. That was pretty good. I, 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 I found the Desmond. You can tell uh, speaking like that in English is not easy for this thing. Yeah. Vocal cords not being set up the same way. <clears throat> All right. Well, um. Big, big, big guy. Ah, well, I do have some unfinished business with the lad. Um, you want me help? You know what? He shot me. He's gonna die. <laughs> and he's does um. Desmond. I'm not Desmond. Um, Adrian is probably ignoring the rest of the panic now on the bus. Then. Uh, but The bus know. was pretty empty, so there's not a lot. Uh, anybody, and I'm pretty sure you guys wouldn't want to sit next to anybody else. I'm no, we're... Sure, I'm pretty sure you took the seats furthest, and buses tend to be a little loud, so it's not... It's not like screeching or anything. It is fairly low. You have to be pretty close to the window to hear it. Otherwise, you'd probably just be like, Oh, I hope the bus isn't going to break down. <laughs> More the people on the outside, you know, driving by, seeing this gigantic bug thing attached to the wind window of a bus, you know. They're the ones freaking out. But they, they can't hear the talking. Well... <clears throat> It's just one of those murder bees that were on the news for a while. That's it. If they were on the news, I don't think they would have been on the news. Um, not yet, at least. Well, um, I will turn to Alice, I guess, because um, 
the other lad here is probably not conscious. I mean, I'll, I'll tap him on the shoulder, do to get try and get his attention, but um, I, I have a feeling it snaps that... out of it. <laughs> All right, you two, good, good, good news. Uh, apparently, our uh, our lad is probably getting killed by the uh, same guy that fell out of a helicopter. Do you remember the animal people? You guys uh, probably don't what? know them quite as well as Rick did. But you do know there were a few other people that they're... Oh, the professor, she, or the individuals that worked on you used the word divergence. The divergence wasn't nearly as kind to them as it was to you. Rick, is that relevant right now? If I can trust anyone, and well, I, I, I have a feeling I can trust the, trust this uh, companion of mine. Or something. I don't. Know. Is he like sat down on the bus seat or something? Like bus, on your lap. Bus windows don't usually open that much. I don't feel like it could get in. So it's, it's maybe got like two legs hooked on the inside, you know. Uh, but okay. I can't see it actually getting in. Okay. Well, uh, the boy here has told me that Desmond is, um, he found him, and he also found that big lad. Um, well, unfortunately, I still don't have a gun, so I have a feeling it'll be a little difficult and, uh, if he's not dead already. <laughs> the bus pulls to a stop. This is your guys' stop. Well, here we go. As you guys make a book booking towards the house, I feel like this is a great point. Everybody, give me scar resistance roll. For, uh, your, for, for the question, secret scar. For the secret scar. A secret scar. scar. Uh, Ooh. what what trait is it attached to? It, it's a mental trait, so it would be your resolve. Okay. So what it's resolve? What? Is it just resolve? Uh, resolve and resolve acclamation. Acclamation. Uh, Plus any other merits that I, I don't have. Wait, why am I cheering? I wanted to fail. <laughs> uh, oh, no. I, I know why you succeeded. Oh, okay. There we go. Two successes. Can I uh, resolve my shaken condition and I, fail this roll? Desmond, um, nah, you didn't need to roll. Oh, okay. I didn't need to roll again. I just heard everyone, so I was like, all right, we're doing this again. No, you had taken care of it, and yes, you can go ahead and sack that condition. And can I have it be a dramatic failure, since... I don't think you get to choose that, because you're already opting to fail with the condition. Okay. I, I don't... I don't know that it says I can't, but that that's fine, though. So what would the result of that be? The failure? The result of that... You have just finished listening to this week's episode of Deviant the Renegades, Children of the Plague, part of the Domain Gaming's Contagion Anthology, written and told by Wyvarian. A special thanks to you, the listener, and if you wish to continue supporting us, subscribe, like, and share. As always, comments are welcome. Until the next chapter, don't stop asking yourself, is there forgiveness? for the murder that birthed you?